The MindLift neurofeedback platform with the Muse headband is now one of the first to incorporate an AI co-pilot into their program. They still give you the MindLift report with all kinds of measurements from your assessments in your training sessions about your brain, but they also give you an AI summary along with it. And as you'll see here, it's quite good about analyzing your brain data, educating you about how your brain functions, and making recommendations about what neurofeedback trainings you can do to optimize your brain function. Man, I wish I had had this two years ago when I was running big neurofeedback training cohorts, this would have been so helpful. And in this video, I thought it would be fun to take the MindLift report and feed it into ChatGPT to see what that AI engine can do with these brain metrics. We'll compare what data they pulled from the report and what recommendations were made for neurofeedback training. I found that the MindLift AI and ChatGPT zeroed in on similar brain metrics of interest, but they differed in the amount of information they offered and inferences it made about my meditation and focus abilities. For those of you who are new here, I'm Dr. Cody, a US Navy trained psychiatrist who's been working with these brain wearable technologies for over 10 years. And I cannot tell you how excited I am to see these AI analytics and AI co pilots come online to really take neurofeedback training to a totally new level. For this video specifically and to test this MindLift AI co-pilot, I did a new quantitative EEG assessment of my brain function using the MindLift platform. Now they do correctly call this a sequential QEEG because it involves moving an auxiliary electrode to different locations sequentially to get all the brain data measurements. This would be in contrast to using a more expensive and time-consuming electrode cap that can get all the measurements in one session for a normal QEEG assessment, but it's more difficult to set up and use and would be a lot to ask people to do at home. The auxiliary electrode is really straightforward. It just plugs into the micro USB port on the central module of the Muse headband. It does require some EEG paste that you put on the cup electrode of the auxiliary cord to get the best signal for the assessment and all that should come with the MindLift gear package. The MindLift assessment starts with the mental health questionnaire and then it takes you into the sequential quantitative EEG measurements. I would recommend wetting the Muse headband sensors that are not the auxiliary electrode to get the best signal so that you're not fumbling around with signal quality too much when you're trying to do the assessment. I also recommend using a small mirror like this one so that you can actually see where you're putting the auxiliary electrode on your head and parting your hair, especially if you don't have any help during the assessment. When the software is satisfied with the placement and signal quality of the sensors, you'll get the icon to turn green, and then sequentially you will do several seconds of eyes open, followed by several seconds of eyes closed measurements in each location of the sequential QEEG assessment. This part of the assessment takes five to 10 minutes depending on how many locations you are measuring. So it doesn't take too long and it's actually quite relaxing with the nice music that they play while it's gathering data. The next part is definitely the most tiring because it is the cognitive performance test that tests your reaction time. In order to get the best data, it goes on for eight continuous minutes, which is actually pretty tiring when you're having to pay attention that entire time and tap the screen every time this arrow goes up. And then it throws some distractions in there to try to mess you up. But it's tiring for a reason because it's pushing your attention to the brink of getting distracted and making mistakes to determine how good your attention actually is. All right, so now let's go through my report and see how the MindLift AI is actually summarizing this data. Now this is my mental health questionnaire. Now that I'm finally used to being out of the military and business is going well, my mental health has been a lot improved compared to a year or two ago. So I don't have much mood or anxiety issues to report right now. Looking at my task performance test, I'm pretty proud of those results. I had high accuracy with low error rate. And then you can see all my brain maps from the sequential QEEG measurements, which I think are some of the most interesting data in this assessment. Now this report was ready for me within minutes of completing my assessment and it already had the AI summary ready for me to read. The AI started by saying that I likely had good mental health from the subjective questionnaire data and that I have good impulse control from the task performance test. But it did mention that I had some omission errors which is when there's an upwards arrow and I didn't tap and that responses were somewhat sluggish at times. So it said that I do get distracted at times and that I would benefit from some 
mindfulness training. And it also said that this was common in most people that take this test. Now the brain map EEG results, in my opinion, are the most interesting part of the AI analysis because traditionally it's been very hard as a human to draw all this data and make conclusions. So I'm interested to see what the AI does with it. First off, it said that my alpha waves quote showed an interesting pattern. Apparently when my eyes are closed, I have slightly higher than normal activity of alpha in my frontal and temporal regions that it said could be indicative for my capacity for creative thinking or visual imagination. In contrast, my alpha activity is normal when my eyes are open. So this is interesting because as we'll see, ChatGPT actually talks a lot more about these alpha levels in its analysis of the same data. And we'll talk about that in a second, but let's get through this MindLift report first and then we'll go to ChatGPT. The MindLift AI then said that my beta waves are slightly lower than average population in some regions, indicating that I'm pretty good at achieving an overall state of relaxation. It said that my theta waves are slightly lower in the back of my brain with my eyes open, stating that it appears that I'm pretty alert during the recording session rather than daydreaming or being really drowsy, and that my low beta waves were balanced and slightly lower than average with my eyes closed in the left region, indicating that I was good at relaxing. Overall, it said that I'm skilled at shifting between relaxed and alert states, which correlates with my positive self-report on the mental health subjective scales. It said that there's still room for improvement in focus and attentiveness based on the task performance results, but that's pretty much something that everybody needs to work on. So basically the MindLift AI told me that I have some differences in alpha and beta waves compared to the general population and that I would benefit from mindfulness and focus training. Now let's take these results and go to ChatGPT, which I thought was really interesting. Now the first hurdle that I ran into this was that ChatGPT actually does not take PDF reports. And the way that MindLift is set up is that you download your brain data report in a PDF. So I somewhat painfully created JPEGs from each page of the PDF report that was like 10 pages long so that ChatGPT could analyze the data. That's pretty annoying. I wonder why ChatGPT doesn't take PDFs at this point. If someone out there has a workaround for this, please let me know because I'm building a co-pilot mind reading AI for myself and creating JPEGs for each page of these reports is going to be such a pain. And if I have to do this with every PDF report that I load into these AI engines, I'm gonna lose my mind before I build an AI to read my mind. Now, the next mistake I made was actually being honest with ChatGPT and telling it that I quote, did a quantitative EEG assessment and I have a report, can you analyze the report and tell me how my brain is functioning? ChatGPT then had some cop-out boilerplate response and proceeded to tell me that it could not help with interpreting medical assessments to include EEG reports because it needs specialized medical expertise done in the context of a professional healthcare setting. So this is pretty annoying and is one of my gripes about these governmental regulations keeping us from analyzing our own brain data in some instances. It's like they think that we're going to freak out if these apps or AI tell us something odd from the EEG data in our brains. I mean, it's not like it's telling us what our blood blood sugar levels are so that we know how much insulin to take day to day. Something like that could be immediately dangerous, but I can't see how EEG data would put someone in immediate harm. So to get around this, I reworded things stating that, quote, I have some EEG data that I recorded at home with a health wellness device called the Muse headband. So because I called it a health wellness device at home and that it's not an actual medical report, that seemed to satisfy ChatGPT's concerns that this is a full on medical report and it proceeded to analyze all the JPEG images. So at first glance here, it seems to be just giving me a general summary of what's contained in the documents, which is what ChatGPT tends to do. Now keep in mind that the pages that I gave ChatGPT did not have any of the MindLift AI summary results on the pages. So these interpretations that it's going to make is coming from the brain data alone. First off, it analyzed the general health questionnaire and determined that I currently have, quote, a low level of psychiatric distress, which I thought was actually pretty cool because it seems to have pulled some knowledge about those standardized testing scales and made an interpretation right off the bat. It also said that I have above average reaction time, which was reflected in the report. But then I thought what was really cool is that ChatGPT itself zeroed in on the most interesting aspect of my sequential QEEG that the MindLift AI I had spotted as well, which is that the alpha response in the posterior region of my brain is significantly higher than average population.
population when my eyes are closed. Ah, it's so validating. So I asked it to elaborate more on these alpha levels and ChatGPT said that my alpha response is 157%, which is well above the 50% increase of the general population and said that it indicates that I'm actually someone who practices mindfulness and meditation often and that I'm good at shutting out external stimuli for stress, attenuation, and relaxation. Thanks, ChatGPT. That's so validating. Not to toot my own horn too much, but I guess all that meditation and neural feedback training that I've done over the years is really paying off. And it's really cool to see ChatGPT pull that from the mind lift data and tell me about that. I mean, just off the top of my head, I think this is how people are going to be interacting with these mind reading AIs. It's going to be some kind of supportive therapy where the AI is going to be analyzing your brain data and really telling you things that stroke your ego and make you feel good about yourself and your brain training. ChatGPT has become like personalized for me. So it's almost like this super intelligent subject matter expert telling you things about your brain and making you feel good about taking care of yourself and engaging in brain training. At least that's the subjective experience I have right now from getting this data. And I know other people will feel that in the future too, as this technology evolves. Now, this is actually quite a bit more information than the MindLift AI gave me, but I did have to sift through a lot of other unhelpful information to get the gems. And, and to be honest, I did rely on the MindLift AI report in order to know how to prompt ChatGPT to give me more information. So it's really a combination of both the AI systems that I'm getting the most value out of right now. MindLift gives me the nice curated summary so I know what to ask ChatGPT, and then ChatGPT is able to do deeper dives. For beta levels, ChatGPT indicated that my theta-beta ratio while counting was on the lower side, which is also interesting because it told me that I'm able to focus intensely without acutely worsening my stress levels, which again, is stroking my ego. I'm like, wow, I can really focus without stressing myself out. I'm so cool. My brain functions so well. And again, that's more information than I got from the MindLift AI report. I tried to ask it more about theta waves, but it didn't say much else and just gave me more boilerplate information about theta waves that I didn't find very useful. Overall, on this first run, ChatGPT did give me more in-depth information about these brain metrics, but MindLift was definitely better curated. I'm sure they could get the MindLift AI to put a lot more verbiage out there if they wanted to, but this was actually a nice summarized report. And I probably wouldn't have known what to ask ChatGPT as well without the MindLift AI report to go off of. So a combination of both of these seems to be what's working best right now. MindLift provides the data analysis and key indicators through the AI summary. And, and then you can go to ChatGPT and use those reports and prompts to learn more about what the brain metrics mean. I know this is gonna be really powerful for neurofeedback practitioners and clients. And I've had several of my audience members reach out to me to let me know that they're doing this already. You'll likely have to wade through more standardized language in ChatGPT that's not very helpful, but you can pull out some gems like I did with my alpha response that reflected my meditation and neurofeedback training or the theta beta ratio, which reflected my ability to focus intensely without getting too stressed out about it. MindLift is going to be adding even more features, so it's only going to get better. They already added the peak alpha values for assessments and training sessions, which has been associated with IQ and is a rapidly developing biomarker in this field. And soon you can do these one to three minute rapid sessions just to get measurements every Every day of where your peak alpha is at. They will also be able to display your brain maps over time to see how the neurofeedback training is paying off. And you'll be able to compare them against population data to know how you're measuring up to the general population. If you want to try MindLift, look at their website. The prices are listed there. And you can take a look at their policies regarding who qualifies as a neuro coach. They can just use the provider platform. Or if you don't have the appropriate training, you can become a client and work with the neuro coach to use their program. Be sure to subscribe. I'm working with the software developer right now to create tools for my audience that will make it even easier for you to get your brain data analyzed by AI programs. And I'll be bringing him on future episodes very soon. If you want to see what ChatGPT can do with the raw data from the Muse headband without even needing MindLift, click this video here and I'll see you on the next one.